Once upon a time, in a faraway land, there lived a man so exceptional that the divine hosts of heaven and hell were forced to take note. A man dangerous enough to bring Satan to his knees, but selfless enough to make God himself raise an eyebrow. How did this come to pass? Well, it all began at a very special birthday party for a very special young lady. Surprise! Surprise! What is all this? It's your birthday, Kinsey. So? You've never been to a birthday party? No. Uh, like not even growing up? I went to the School of the Americas since kindergarten. We didn't really do birthday parties. Mm, but you celebrated Christmas? I don't have to explain myself to you. Oh, Kinsey, this is going to be so much fun. Zinjai made a cake. Jane Austen is here. We'll play some games. What sort of games? <laughs> so you celebrate birthdays by trafficking with spirits? It's spooky and fun. It's a bunch of letters. It's tradition! Every slumber party has to involve a spirit board. Slumber party? How's it work? We ask it a question, and the spirit of the board will reveal the answer. How? Yeah, someone pushes the pointy thing to wherever they want. Wait, wait, can we go back to you and your slumber parties? No time! All right, everyone put their hands on the cursor. Cursor? I feel the magic already. All right! Will the president slash god emperor for life ever choose a partner to reign alongside them? <sighs> no. Ooh, someone's getting married. Shut up, Matt. Who will tame the president's wild heart? <laughs> what are you guys trying to spell? I'm not moving it. That's the spirit, Kinsey. I'm serious. I'm not moving it either. Neither am I. Jezebel? Who the fuck is <laughs> Is that not normal? Where'd you get the board? I was going through Zinyak's artifact collection and found it there. Who did it belong to? Alistair Crowley? It's Christ. Um, guys, I think it's laughing at us. Fuck this. I think you're a smart enough piece of wood to see where this is going. Now, are you ready to cooperate? That's more like it. You think we can trust it? It's not like we got a lot of options. So what's the plan? We mount up and go in after the boss? No, I do. No sense in what's left of humanity walking right into a death trap. Someone's gotta live to tell the story. That's a stupid plan, Johnny. I'm leaving you in charge. Hell of a plan, Johnny! Are you serious? I'm coming too. Are you kidding me? How do you plan to come back? Yeah, I try not to sweat the details. You need someone with you that does. No. It's my birthday. Fine. All right, then. You know where my friend is? True to its word, the spirit board opened up another portal and sent Johnny and Kinsey screaming into hell. behind this, I know it. Ultor and the Saints haven't been enemies in years. You really think he's responsible? You don't know him like I do. The boss put him through a window for a reason. The reason was the boss was kind of fucking crazy back then. That's a fair point. You know how much easier this would be if we just found a car? You know how much easier this would be if you just gave me a second? Alright. Now how are we gonna find the Eltor building? Biggest building down here, giant altar sign on it. I don't think this is a problem. I'll buy that. This all hell's got to offer.
Cat driving together on a birthday adventure. Are you always this excited? Generally, I'm a misanthrope. I get it. This is hell. Not as bad as I thought. It kind of reminds me of Steelport. Shoot him in the face unless he gives us the boss man. What if Dean doesn't have a boss? I'll probably still shoot him in the face. Welcome to hell. Shouldn't you have a receptionist? Such is the plight of eternal damnation. I have a feeling you didn't come here to catch up. Let's talk in my office. Not even death could stop the enterprising Vogel, who wasted no time in setting up an altar branch in the bowels of hell. Dane was eager to fill Johnny in on the ever-shifting politics of land rights in the underworld. But real estate mattered little to Johnny, who only cared where his friend was. Where'd you put the president? I've been trying to explain that I didn't take them. Bullshit. You expect me to believe you just happen to be the first thing we see in hell. Maybe it's just me, but your thank you sounds more like an accusation. That's probably because he plans to kill you. Okay. I get the trust issues. Can I show you something? The pieces all came together. The president had caused more chaos and destruction than any other in human history. It was only natural that Satan would want them to marry his daughter. They needed a plan. And Johnny had one. I'm gonna shoot the devil in the face. I think you might be skipping some details. No, I said in the face. I like the commitment, but you gotta find a way to get close enough to him in the first place. When's the wedding? I'll just show up and... and then you'll shoot him in the face. Sorry, but it's a little more complicated than that. These things are tied to the soul. You won't be able to enter without one. So how do we get one? You get his attention. I know some places that are of particular value to the father of the bride. You hit those, you'll get your shot. Wait, why would Satan give out an invitation for destroying his stuff? Oh, he won't, but it should piss him off enough to get him to attack Johnny personally. Either the devil kills Gat and Ultor gets the construction contracts to rebuild what was destroyed, or Johnny kills Satan and I'll have to pay less taxes. It's pretty win-win. That's why you're helping us? To make more money in hell? Hell's what you make of it, sweetie. Works for me. What you got? All right. Satan had entrusted the day-to-day -day running of Hell to five Archdukes, and Dane knew how to find them all. But beyond that, not everyone in Hell was content to go along with Satan's status quo. There were others who shared Dane's ambition for power, and the Altor Mogul knew that the key to unseating Satan lay in gaining their aid. But before Johnny set out to wage war against the Prince of Darkness, Dane had one final gift. An artifact that he had spent fortunes on. Lucifer's Cracked Halo. This holy relic granted Johnny the majestic wings of the Morning Star. However, he still needed help in learning how to use them. Here's the deal. If you want some face time with Satan, you need to get his attention. Now, Satan hates being challenged, so anything you do to undermine his control is good. 
fraud, mayhem, shooting demons in the face, anything. You can keep track of Satan's wrath with this handy meter. Get it high enough and you'll be having drinks with Big Red in no time. I've compiled a list of shit to do, so take a look and do whatever sounds fun. Oh, one more thing. We have some potential allies down here. Trust me, you want to impress them. Abandoned ship! We've been boarded! <laughs> These damn things off my ship! Keep it coming. I got a bit of treasure in that chest over there. The weapon you find inside may help with our little imp problem. The screams of success. Get off, you piece of shit. Fantastic work. I summoned these imps to serve as my crew. I forgot what a handful they could be. Once aboard, they wouldn't listen to their captain. They ran amok in the bowels of the ship. They're swarming me! Ah, no, not another one of these. Hey, it's okay to drop the pirate voice. What pirate voice would that be? Wow. Zinyak's destruction of Earth had a profound impact on the afterlife. To heaven, it was a logistical nightmare. St. Peter's meticulous nature drove purgatory wait times to unbearable levels. Meanwhile, in Hell, where souls in pain were used as currency, it created a new era of prosperity for the wickedly enterprising. This economic boom resulted in the coffers of Hell to be overflowing, which in turn piqued the interest of the most notorious man that sailed the Seven Seas. Long had Blackbeard been a thorn in Satan's side, robbing tax collectors on a semi-regular basis. But the promise of an immeasurable fortune drove him to be even bolder. An arrangement was reached. Blackbeard would provide information on strategic targets in exchange for a share of the profit. Johnny, who was interested in murder, not money, happily agreed. Lights up. William Shakespeare, humanity's greatest playwright, and hell's most diabolical purveyor of entertainment, looks on as a brave mortal on an Orphean quest enters. The bard's interest is piqued, and he looks to test his visitor's mettle. The masked tragedies were used to enemies cowering as they approached. But soon they realized that they faced a foe with courage and nobility. Traits uncommon in the fires of perdition.
The inciting incident resolved. The time had come for rising action. The battle raged on below, and as bullets and blood flew, the bard arched a curious eyebrow. Could this mortal be the exact thing that Shakespeare needed? Resolved, Shakespeare eagerly awaited meeting the champion that dispatched so many of his men. Undoubtedly, they were here for the Bard's aid. And while happy endings were not a thing found in hell, Shakespeare always had a soft spot for comedies. In the land of the living, William Shakespeare is regarded as one of the most prolific playwrights of all time. However, to the denizens of hell, the bard is seen in a far different light. After selling his soul for fame and adoration, Shakespeare served in hell as Satan's spy master general. In doing his duty, Shakespeare would punish the souls he was investigating by forcing them to perform in grotesque passion plays for Satan's amusement. But in a Twelfth Night-esque twist, Shakespeare found himself living a double life. While he projected an image of cruelty, his heart was as soft as Jezebel's. In secret, he would tutor her on the classics and act out the works of his mortal days. When Satan found out, he cast Shakespeare out of the palace, believing that the poet would be tormented by the populace of hell, far out of Jezebel's sight. But Satan had not counted on the bard's cunning. Embracing his persona of master torturer, Shakespeare and his followers, the tragedies, took root in the entertainment district, biding their time for revenge. The horn on the bus goes beep, 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 You know, I gotta say, this song is pretty catchy. Does the banality of this children's song not drive you mad? This isn't pop music? You are a strange woman. Uh-oh. Ah! 
must end this infernal music! Come, let us return to my castle, so we may plot our next steps in proper surrounds. Johnny led Vlad back to his castle, which since his incarceration became a haven for frat parties and squatters. But the systematic impaling of trespassers would have to wait. Vlad was a man of his word, and was eager to provide intel that could aid in hobbling Satan's armies. We're standing in a parking garage. I don't like it either, but Cinderpool isn't giving us many options. I can't believe they tried to force us out. I can't believe you forgot the mimosas. I think we have bigger problems. I don't think you realize how much I love mimosas. Viola! Thank God you're okay! How do you know Viola? We're like sisters. I am her sister. No need to get territorial. We can all share. I'm not sharing my sister with you! Someone's got puritanical hang-ups. What did you say? Let it go! Your summer it begins! I'm starting to understand why the boss likes violence so much. You know, it's really important to me that you two get along. Can we talk about this later? Classic Kiki. Always deflecting. Classic Kiki? I've never met you. I know everything about you. She grows on you. I promise. Great! The halo's not working. We should get you back to the altar building. Hooray! After being reunited in hell, Kiki and Viola wasted no time in doing what they do best. Facilitate the running of businesses. However, the De Winter sister's success did not sit well with other would-be power players in hell. The sisters' operations all came under attack at once, forcing them on the run. Soon, the twins found themselves on the receiving end of an offer they couldn't refuse. After all, it was better to own one-fifth of something than to be dead. Great job tearing up hell. Thanks. I need you to stop. What? Do you really think Satan could still be thinking about Jezebel's wedding after all the damage you've done? I'm telling you. The devil is about to react in a big way, and when he does, we need to be ready. Satan didn't have much time to react to the war Gat was waging, because at home, Jezebel was waging a war of her own. I don't love them! You think I care? If you started acting like a father, you would. I'm looking after your best interest. You don't care about my happiness! This is about you! If you just stop telling- You will marry that saint, and I won't hear another word! I won't do it! You think because you're my daughter, you think that you're above it all. But schemes are currently in motion. Your choice, be a wife or be a thrall. 
They say the devil's in the details And I have some more for you Celestial light doesn't shine a ray here Happy endings are through You belong to me I'm giving you away Your blood will not save you My hand will be cruel If you disobey You belong to me Never. I'm sick of perdition, so tired of tradition, but now my time has come to go break away, to live for today, to stand out beneath the sun. I know there has to be some way for me to be free, just living a life that's far from the strife and torture is Working, Kinsey. You don't know that, Johnny. I'm tearing this place apart, but Satan doesn't even seem to. We didn't come this far to fail. You think I'm giving up? We have one less place to go. What if it doesn't work? The bus is counting on us. You think I don't know? How do I burn down a city that's baptized in fire? How do I kill off an army that's dead? Time's slipping away now, and the best plan we've got is just put one inside Satan's head. If roles were reversed, God, I know they'd save me, but all my solutions involve murder spree. You have to stay the course and kill without remorse. Yeah, that sounds fun, but what has that done? We're still where we stand. The day isn't over yet. Our sun's not begun to set. No matter how small, the wings of a fly can create hurricanes. Johnny Gat. Hope, I feel hope for the first time I've ever in my life. Gat is the name that cuts through my Above, I know I'll be happy when I find love. I know I'll be happy when I find love. You might want to swing by the old tour building. There's someone here you need to meet. On my way. Emboldened by the power of song, Jezebel set out to find the one man that could save her from her impending nuptials. Fortunately for her, Johnny's trail of destruction wasn't too hard to follow. One night with any lover, but you have to punch a panda. Do you do it? Ooh, good question. Um, Mr. Gat? Who are you? 
Well, I'm a... We're not doing that again. Oh, okay. I'm Jezebel. Good to know. What are you doing? Threatening you. You're not marrying the president. I don't want to marry the president. Wow, that was easier than I thought. My dad's making me do it. What now? Now I'm holding you hostage. You don't need to do this. Yeah, that's what hostages always say. No, like, you really don't need to do this. I'm here to help you. Yeah, but I already have the gun drawn, so, uh... Are you kidding me? Maybe. I'm not sure yet. I'm kind of winging it. Can you wing it without the gun? Eh, it's a comfort thing. Not for me. What do you want? For you to put the gun down. Get used to disappointment. You sound like my father. What? He's always telling me that life is about misery, not happiness. That dreams only exist to make people forget about their own mediocrity. Man, that's depressing. Being the devil's daughter sucks. What do you want? I want to punch my dad in the face. We're gonna get along just fine. Of course, Jezebel was speaking metaphorically, but Johnny didn't notice. Jezebel was eager to help Johnny in any way she could, and vowed to find a way to sneak him into the palace. Johnny frowned at the seemingly arbitrary amount of time required for Jezebel to find a way to sneak him in. But he accepted the fact that without traditional missions, this was the best way to further the story. I heard from Jezebel. She's ready to sneak you in. I knew she'd come through. I'll be right there. Jezebel's plan worked flawlessly, and when the time was right, she made her way to the bowels of the palace. But while she successfully managed to breach the castle walls to let Johnny in, she did not go unnoticed. Put that toy down, Mr. Gat. And why would I do that? Oh, because if you don't, I'll break Jezebel's beautiful neck. She's your daughter. I'll say something kind at her funeral. Drop it. I knew it. It's you. It's always been you. Yeah, well, what you talking about? You love her. I really don't. You love her! Ah, Johnny, my boy! I misjudged you! You've shown loyalty by walking into hell. You've shown cunning by robbing me. You've shown brutality by killing my generals. And now you're willing to sacrifice yourself for my daughter. You're the man who should be my son. <laughs> Defiant to the end. Now listen, boy. You've proven your spirit, but don't presume to push me further. Let him go. Not now, Jesse. The men are talking. Dad, let him go. Look how you inspire her. She wants to kill me. You bring out the best in her. I'll offer you a deal, Mr. Gat. Marry my daughter, and I'll allow your companion to leave with the President's soul. It's your choice. You know where to find me. The President's soul was within Johnny's grasp. All he had to do was marry Satan's daughter. The time had come for the black wedding that would unite Johnny and Jezebel as Hell's new power couple. The tabloids were already calling them Johnny Bell. But Johnny had something different in mind. Hey, Satan! You want to get out of here? I can't believe that worked. Occam's razor. Playtime is over, Mr. Gat. Save them if you can. I love weddings.
strength is yours. <laughs> I think not. Stop this. It's embarrassing. The will to fight! Who's next? Enough! Minions! Finish him! Gazelle hunts the lion. <laughs> I think not. I like you better. Over there. This is nothing! Audacity! I like you better over there. The gazelle hunts the lion. I think not. Let's play. This is nothing! You dare! Admirable attempt! Enough! And like that, the battle had ended. Satan could no longer suffer the indignity of being beaten by a mortal and disobeyed by his daughter, and so he banished them from perdition. But still, all was not well. That was a direct order from your captain! You're worse than Pierce! Trivia night is sacred! You don't get to quit just because you know fuck all about pop culture. Who knows the name of the Nightblade episode where they introduced Nightbladeette? It was called The Meaning of Reconciliation and it was directed by Kim Stein. I can't believe Asha sleeps with you. I can't believe you don't. Boss, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. What?
What is this place? Whoa, 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 whoa. Who the fuck is that? Her name's Jezebel. She's the devil's daughter. Pierce is gonna have a heart attack. Eh, she likes to sing. Pierce will dig her. I don't think... Can you rock the narrator from Joseph? Yeah. She'll be fine. Guys, where's Johnny? Our hero had not yet returned to the mortal coil, for he was waylaid by none other than God himself. I have a situation. Look, man, I just really want to go home. I owe you. Huh? Zinyak hastened the apocalypse. St. Peter's a good guy, bless his heart, but he was processing souls way too slowly. With the destruction of Earth, Satan had the numbers to storm heaven. All he needed was the President of the United States to lead them. What, you think I couldn't do it? No, I think you wouldn't do it. Aisha's up here. I want to see her. Slow down, buddy. I said that I owe you, and I'll make good on that. But I want you to know your options. And now you, dear reader, shape the tale. If you want to see Johnny reunited with the love of his life, turn to page 31. If you want to see the devil defeated and Johnny crowned the new king of hell, turn to page 13. If you want the saints to find a new home world for what's left of humanity, turn to page 62. If you want God to recreate the Earth, but in doing so retcon the entire world of Saints Row, turn to page 124. And finally, if you want God to bestow Johnny with the answers to all the questions of the universe, turn to page 248. Johnny knew that he couldn't choose his own happiness at the expense of humanity, and so he asked God to reshape the world, hoping that maybe, just maybe, in this new life, he could find his friends again. It's really her. I can't believe we've bagged Brimstone. It doesn't make sense. She's evaded capture for years. Why would she drop the ball now? I don't know. When the lieutenant gets to interrogation, Brimstone's gonna talk. Johnny realized that this was his one chance to make it into heaven. He had to take it. he loved Aisha, Johnny couldn't abandon his friends and the rest of humanity. There it is. The planet itself looks perfect. Oxygen base, lush forest, clean water, fertile soil. What's the catch? It appears to be inhabited by a psychotic warlike race. This is going to be our toughest fight yet. Thank you, God.
there were so many questions that Johnny needed answers to. Why did good people suffer? Was there a way to bring peace to all mankind? What was the secret to making a perfect lobster bisque? In Hell's weakened state, the Heavenly Host made short work of Satan and those who were loyal to him. Soon, Johnny was the new ruler of Hell. Kinda pretty, isn't it? Yeah, it kinda is. Do you miss your friends? Nah, I know they'll be down here in no time. The alliance that Johnny brought together had far-reaching effects throughout the afterlife. For centuries, the Altor Alliance ruled in relative peace, until a new threat emerged. A secret cabal that plotted to strike at a time of complacency. The war was long and tumultuous, but in the end, the Altor Alliance prevailed. So what then became of those who aided Gat? Dane's partnership with Johnny changed him more than he knew. When William Sharp abducted Kiki, Dane risked his life to save her. The two got married soon after. Naturally, an ironclad prenup was agreed to. Sharp is now their pool boy. Vlad's castle was returned to its former terrifying glory. Kilbane's screams echo throughout the shantytown, a permanent reminder of what comes to those who question Vlad's dominion. Blackbeard now sails across the sky on the Queen Anne's Revenge, searching for any others who would threaten the Alliance's control and pressing them into service. Shakespeare's considerable fame only skyrocketed when he unveiled his latest opus, the live burial, exhumation and reburial of Shogo Akuji. The critics and audiences loved it. Shogo, not so much. People kept on tormenting Dex. The payback was well overdue. But Viola looked not for power or revenge. The deal she sought was of a different nature. Ever a realist, Viola knew there was no way to barter her way past the pearly gates. But she was quite confident she could reach a different arrangement with God. An annual conference between representatives of heaven and hell. It's really just an excuse for them to play volleyball. <laughs>